Welcome to today's ABC UTC Research Seminar. The presentations in this seminar highlight research work at the ABC UTC's partner universities. Each seminar consists of a 40-minute presentation followed by a 15-minute a question and answer session. My name is Mary Lou Rawls Newman, Director of Technology Transfer at the ABC UTC. I'll be moderating today's seminar. I'll be assisted by Paul Lyles, former Georgia State Bridge Engineer, and Jamal El Kaisi, FHWA ABC lead, both members of the ABC UTC Advisory Committee, who will be moderating the Q&A session. Ali Javid, PhD student at FIU, will be managing the web room. We're pleased to welcome participants at over 250 registered sites for today's seminar. The seminar today features the ABC UTC research project on the development of user-friendly tools and decision-making algorithms for service life design of ABC bridges conducted through the University of Oklahoma in collaboration with George Mason University. We'd like to thank Armin Mohrabi, co-director and director of research at the ABC UTC for coordinating today's featured research project. We're pleased to introduce our presenters, Shima Mohebi, Principal Investigator, and Mark Herman de Sosa, Master's Student, both with George Mason University, and Royce Floyd, Co-Principal Investigator and Q&A Panel Member with the University of Oklahoma. We'll now begin our featured presentation. Shima? Thank you. Uh, first, thank you all for tuning in and attending this webinar. Uh, today, we present a web-based decision support tool implemented for the service life design of ABC bridges with focus on longitudinal day closure joints. Two graduate students from computer science and civil engineering departments have worked on this project. I present the introductory slides, then I turn it over to Mark to explain the implementation steps and demonstrate the tool. Infrastructure is a major topic of concern in the US today. Half to uh, two-thirds uh, two of US bridges will exceed their design life by uh, 2030, and uh, many will need to be rehabilitated or replaced as they age. Bridges have typically been designed uh, based on a design life of uh, 50 to 75 years, which considers that assumptions made during design will remain valid for that time period. A concept that is gaining traction for bridge design is one based on service life or the time period uh, during which the bridge will continue to provide its intended function. However, use of uh, service life design in practice is limited by available guidance and design processes. Recently, a service life design has received more attention, including some large studies resulting in an ASHO guide specification for service life design of highway bridges, which provides practical guidance for service life design. The ASHO guide a specification provides general guidance for service life design of bridges. But the speed and uh, potential uh, durability of ABC techniques are significant benefits for addressing the expected needs for bridge rehabilitation and replacement in the coming years. Among ABC techniques, prefabricated bridge elements are the most popular, and of those full depth thick panels and pre-top modular units are the most popular prefabricated elements. All prefabricated elements require durable connections and for prefabricated thick elements, these are typically in the form of closure joints. Uh, these can be either longitudinal or transverse to the roadway direction as shown in this illustration. A strength design of these joints is relatively simple but consideration of service life design is more complicated. Guidance for selecting appropriate details for a given situation was needed. A previous study sponsored by uh, the ABC UTC uh, developed a guide for service life design of longitudinal deck closure joint that was published in 2019. Closure joint design methods for service life and durability are synthesized in this publication. 
it developed a framework for service life design of closure joints used in ABC. The general process in the guide consisted of a series of steps. One, identify project requirements relevant to service life. Two, identify and select feasible closure joint types. Three, identify factors influencing service life modes of failures and consequences. Four, identify suitable methods for mitigation um, for mitigate um, mit for mitigating failure modes or assessing damage risk. Five, modify closure joint but potential mitigation strategies. Six, estimate service life, and finally, uh, conduct life cycle cost analysis and choose joint meeting a strength and uh, service life requirement. The guide uh, presented about um, five alternatives that could be used for closure joints. These alternatives include different geometry, shape, and reinforcement configuration. And for each alternative, several mitigation strategies along with the estimated service life and cost items were presented in the guide. Uh, the mitigation strategies uh, are the combination of several solutions such as increasing deck and closure joint thickness by half an inch using normal strength concrete, UHPC overlay material, stainless uh, steel reinforcement, and bottom sealers. Now, we would like to briefly uh, walk you through the details of service life calculation, fixed second law uh, implementation steps, and then demonstrate the web-based uh, tool. Mark, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mohibi. Uh, so in the ABC UTC guide, the time to reinforcement corrosion initiation was used as a service life metric. Uh, so it was based on chloride ingress reaching a threshold value and used fixed second law and an assumption of one dimensional ingress of chloride through the concrete deck. The calculation is based on the about uh, in the following equation, C sub XT equals to C naught times one minus the error function of X over two square root of D sub C times T, where C, C sub XT is the chloride concentration at depth x and time t c naught is the surface chloride concentration d sub c is the chloride diffusion constant and erf is the error function uh, this figure shows an illustration of the progression of chloride concentration with depth over time so while the guide is comprehensive we want to make it available and user friendly for bridge engineers to use it in their design and decisions. Uh, so the overarching objective of this project is to design and implement a web-based decision support tool based on the steps presented in the guide. The tool is visual and allows the user to easily navigate through the design options, design steps, on-site requirements, geometry, material properties, and modes of failure. Particularly, it calculates the estimated service life of the bridge deck and initial cost. We then utilize a multi-criteria decision-making algorithm for trade-off analysis and to help users choose the best option or the best mitigation strategy. Uh, so to achieve this goal, we have defined four main tasks. The first task was to design the architecture of the design support tool. Uh, the next step was to the content flow identification, algorithms, analytics, and dashboard design. To this end, we first translated the design uh, solutions presented in the guide into unified modeling language, UML use case diagrams. UML is a general purpose modeling language. The main aim of U UML is to define a standard way to visualize the way a system has been designed. We also design a series of interactive questions based on the decision-making criteria tool uh, to walk the user through design solutions. We also solicited feedback from research advisory panel and several state DOT engineers and updated, updated the tool. Uh, so as you can see here, the architecture has three main layers. 
uh, the graphical user interface, the application layer, and the database server. So the first layer is the face of the web tool or the interface. Everything that is visible to the user and user communication is done in this layer. So the various forms that we will see later on during the live demonstration fall under the first layer. Uh, the second layer is the application layer, um, which performs computations. It also checks that the user data is valid. The application servers include data models and analytics and algorithms to calculate the service life, cost, trade-off analysis. Uh, the third layer is the um, database server, which stores information. Uh, so we can query uh, information, delete, insert, or update the information when available. Based on user input, um, based on the user input, the scripts are executed on the web server to generate output on the user side. Uh, specifically, we're talking about the application server we use in the project. It is a Python-based open source. Um, it, its architecture is based on model view controller design pattern. It means that the application consists of data models, presentation information, and control information. And based on the user input, it can manipulate the data models. So this is flexible and comprehensive platform, which gives us the opportunity to add different levels of computational intelligence to the application. For instance, in the future, we might want to add some more advanced data mining algorithms to make the application more dynamic and intelligent. So the application is very flexible. Uh, so under task two, uh, we designed use case diagrams. So this was to understand the relation between input parameters and mitigation strategies. As you can see in the illustration, the user is a primary actor who initiates the system. And the database is the uh, secondary actor who provides the necess necessary details to process the request. So the user selects the closure join types and properties such as joint width, deck thickness, and other measures. <coughs> so here's the snapshot of the uh, relational database. So which supports spatio-temporal data set. So overall, as you can see, there are a number of tables and relationship between the tables. The main tables user, uh, include the user, uh, joint, service life issues, service life parameters, inspection data, and the cost. Uh, you're not meant to read the table and their attributes. However, I would like to point out that in designing relational database, we are concerned about the inheritance relationship between the classes. We define aggregation, composition, and generalization. Uh, simply put, it means that one user can have multiple joints. One joint can have multiple service life issues, service life parameters, and costs associated with it. So each joint will have one inspection data. So one, one is to one, uh, many is to one, one is to many. So so moving on to the algorithms used in the web tool. Uh, we used fixed second law for calculating service life, as I mentioned before. So in this particular, we use the time to start the corrosion, assuming one dimensional uh, ingress of chloride through the concrete deck. It should be noted that fixed second law is not sufficient to calculate the service life when an overlay is used. So let's say we have an overlay like UHPC overlay. So for that, the service life calculation is not feasible. Also, this calculation does not account for cracking in the concrete over time. So these are some of the assumptions that we were taking into consideration. Uh, the next is the initial cost. So the initial cost is calculated using a combination of bridge length, uh, bridge width, number of joints in the bridge, and the cost of materials used. Uh, the user can input the cost for materials or use suggested values available in the ABC UTC guide. Each closure joint has different dimensions, which will, which will vary the initial cost. If the user does not provide input for any of the materials, the tool suggested values will be used. I also should point out that the cost calculations are carried out based on limited data, which is only good for comparing options. 
the user is advised to use their own values. Uh, lastly, the, uh, the last algorithm that we implemented in the web tool is related to multi-criteria decision making. Uh, so to find the best mitigation solution for the selected closure join, topsis or technique for order of preference by similarity was implemented. The algorithm utilizes user preference as a way to perform trade-off analysis between cost and service life. The user decides whether to give a priority to the service life or cost. The algorithm then ranks the option based on the user preference and the web tool displays the first and the second best option. This is similar to, but does not exactly align with the ASTO guide specification ranking system. So now let's take a look at the live demonstration of the tool. So uh, this is the landing page of the web tool. Um, so the user will be first uh, greeted with the with a brief background of the uh, background information about ABC UTC and the main objective of the web tool. So as you can see, we have two buttons. The first one is register user and the second one is login. Um, so if it's, an, if it's a new user, then they will click on register user and if if the user has already used the tool, then they can just go ahead and log in. So let me go ahead and register a user. Uh, so as you can see, this is the uh, user registration. Uh, we have some details like first name. So I'm just going to really see, fill this up. So this is some personal information, city. Uh, so next, uh, next up is the email. This will be used for login. So enter uh, email and password and uh, remember that. Uh, as you can see, all the fields that are marked with asterisk are required. Uh, so let's go on to the next step, which is the closure join properties. Uh, so here we have the join properties which are first is first parameter is the closure join with limitation. Um, here's some information um, for the uh, closure join with limitation. So we have some range and suggested values. So let me enter 18 inches. Uh, next we have is the deck thickness. Again, let's enter something 15 inches. Uh, next up is the reinforcement bar type. It could be ordinary bar, stainless steel bar, or epoxy coated. I will select ordinary bar. Uh, join direction. Uh, since we are dealing with longitudinal, I will select longitudinal join. De join depth will be full. Uh, so next, next up is the local site requirements. Uh, we have some information like uh, the structure number of the bridge, maybe something like I see one, two, three. Uh, when was the bridge built? Uh, site location, let's say if it's coastal. Coastal. Uh, so the bridge location, so we have six different options. Um, let's select rural highway bridge. Uh, next is the bridge length, which would be used in cost calculation. So I'm going to say 100,000 feet. Uh, next thing we have is the bridge width, 200 feet. Uh, and the number of lanes. All of these would be used for the cost calculations. So let's go to the next page, which is closure joint selection. So click on the closure joint selection. Um, so this is the closure joint types. We have five closure joint types. The first one is normal stand concrete with straight bars, as you can see. Uh, the second option is normal strength concrete with 90 degree hook bars. So here's the specification. 
Uh, third option is normal strength concrete with 180 degree hook bar. Uh, fourth option is normal strength concrete with headed bars. And last option is UHPC with straight bars. So I will select the uh, first option, normal strength with straight bars. Uh, so here we have identification of suitable mitigation strategy based on fault tree analysis. So you can see this is a hyperlink, which will take you to the um, reference. So here the user can select whatever is applicable for them based on their design. So I will select some options. Uh, so this is the second uh, uh, option. So these are natural or man-made hazards. So whatever is applicable, the user can select. So I will select humidity. Um, so these are the, based on the selections which we did in the previous page, these are the um, uh, mitigation strategies that the user is able to see. Uh, so this is a dynamic page. So whatever we selected in the previous page, only those options are visible. So we have service life issue and we have mitigation strategy. So these are some of the, um, solutions uh, so let's say if the user is a new design and the, let's say the user is using a new type of design and they want to modify some make some changes or change the closure joint type then they can click on this button which will allow them to go back and select a different closure joint so let's say we select this one, uh, normal strength with 180 degree hook bar. Uh, select some applicable ones, so shrinkage, salt corrosion. So these are ba based on the different factors affecting, we have different options this time. So mitigation strategies and service life are different. So we get different. So once the closure joint is finalized and once the user is satisfied, they can click on calculate the service life. So uh, this is the uh, parameters to calculate the time to initiate corrosion using fixed second law. And we have some assumptions, like I mentioned previously, assuming only one dimensional chloride ingress uh, does not account for cracking in concrete. UHPC is not considered for calculation and is assumed to have service life of 150 plus years. Epoxy coated bar has similar performance to normal bar. So these are some of the assumptions. Um, and we have the first parameter that is enter the surface chloride concentration. Uh, if you click on the I, it will show you some information. If the user does not have any idea what the parameter is, then this will provide some information. And we have a range. Uh, next we have is a suggested value. Um, and we have a user value. So if the user wants to have their own value, they can just click on this and enter their own value. So let's say I enter 0.6. Uh, the next parameter is uh, enter diffusion coefficient. So for this, we have, again, some information. 
uh, we have a suggested value and we have user value. So I will stick with the uh, default of the suggested value. Next we have is the chloride threshold value. So some information. Uh, and the suggested value or the user value. So if the user does not have any value, uh, it will go up with the suggested value. Same thing with uh, cover depth, enter cover depth, and we have some information. Um, so I will stick with the suggested values for the three options and go with the user value for the first surface chloride concentration. Uh, next up we have is the material cost. So uh, these are some of the assumptions. It should be noted that the material cost may vary between the United States and worldwide. Bridge engineers are encouraged to revise and modify those values to fit specific project needs. Uh, so the initial cost is calculated based on material cost, bridge length, width, number of closure joints, and number of bars. So uh, there's a hyperlink for more information regarding the default values. Uh, so the first parameter is uh, enter the cost of normal strength concrete, or NSC. Uh, we have some information. Uh, same format, we have a suggested value and we have a user value. So let's enter something different. Uh, next we have is the um, enter the cost for UHPC or ultra high performance concrete. And we have information. And we have suggested value or user value. So if I can enter a user value. Uh, next option, next parameter is the cost of sealer for say in the bottom of the deck. We have some information. And we have a suggested value or the user value. So I will stick with the suggested value. Next we have is the cost of reinforcement, black steel bar. We have uh, information and suggested value and user value. Similarly, we have cost of reinforcement headed steel bar. We have some information and the suggested value. Next we have is the cost of reinforcement stainless steel bars. Uh, information and suggested value or the user value, whichever the user wants. Next we have is the cost of asphalt overlay. Uh, some information. and the suggested value or the user value. I will stick with the suggested value. Next we have is the cost of membrane for top surface. We have some information uh, suggested value or the user value. So I will stick with suggested values for all these options except for the first two. Uh, next we have is the uh, uh, trade-off analysis. So here is some of the information for the trade-off analysis. So we're using technique for order of preference by similarity to ideal solution, which is also called as Topsys. So it is a multi-criteria decision-making algorithm. Uh, the algorithm finds trade-off between criteria when a poor performance in one can be compensated by 
good performance in another criterion. To give higher priority to service life, please enter higher value for a service life. And the total should be exactly 100. So let's say I give 70% preference to service life and 30% preference to cost. So I'm giving a higher preference to service life and a lower preference to cost. So based on that, we can see what the best mitigation strategy is. So once I click on this, it will, so it will do the processing in the background. And based on the uh, based on the algorithms, we get uh, the best mitigation strategy, the cost, and the estimated service life. So here we have increasing deck and closure joint thickness by 0.5 inches, UHPC overlay, and bottom sealer, bottom of the deck. So this is the best mitigation strategy based on the uh, preferences given. So 70% preference was given to service life and 30% was given to cost. So uh, the cost of initial cost is $4.1 per square foot feet. And the uh, estimated service life is 150 years. So uh, like, as you can see, uh, it has given more preference to the service life and lower preference to the cost. Also, we have second best option or the second best. So let's take a look at what the second best is. So it is increasing deck and closure joint thickness by 0.5 inches using normal stent concrete and stainless steel reinforcement type 316. So as you can see, the initial cost is $13 per square feet and the service life is 150 years. So as you can see, uh, our algorithm ranks the uh, first strategy as the best because it has a lower uh, cost compared to the second one. The service life are similar, but the cost is much higher in the second option. This is the reason why this is the second best instead of being the first. So uh, let's say the user wants to maybe change the parameters or change some values and look at the results again. So let's do the recalculate parameters and see, the, uh, try some different values. So I'm gonna stick with 0.6 here and go to the cost input. Change this. Uh, so this time uh, I will give 30% preference to service life and 70% preference to cost. Uh, let's see what happens if we uh, interchange the numbers and uh, let's see what kind of results we get from this. So 70% preference is given to cost and 30% is given to service life. Um, once I click this, it will. So as you can see, the the this time the best mitigation strategy is increasing deck and closure joint thickness by 0.5 inches using normal strength concrete and bottom sealers, bottom of the deck. So as you can see, uh, the initial cost is very low, about $1.2 per square feet. And but the service life is also less. So if you remember, we gave a higher preference to the cost. So it gave us an it gave us a mitigation strategy which has the least amount of cost. And it did not focus on the service life much. So this is the best option if you have more priority on the cost and if you want to keep the cost low. Uh, we also have a second best option, which let's try to see which is same as before, increasing deck and closure joint thickness by 0.5 inches, UHPC overlay and bottom sealer. So as you can see, this one is $4.1 per square feet and 150 years. Um, so this is the second best option because we had more preference to the cost compared to the service life. So that's why we have this one showing as the second best. So next up in this page, we have, have you used any other mitigation solution in the past? So if the user says yes, they have then they, have, they can 
input some data uh, like what kind of mitigation solution they've used in the past so they can add more options so this is more of a data collection and uh, it is optional so if the user says no then uh, last we go to the inspection data so inspection data so in this form the user can input inspection data uh, by providing inspection data you will get access to the data shared by other users via email as you can see we have different bridge components uh, which are not limited to closure joints uh, so this is more for data collection hence we are not limiting options to closure joint so as you can see we have different bridge components uh, next we have is the timestamp or the date of inspection Um, followed by we have a condition of the bridge which uh, can be classified into excellent very good good satisfactory or poor so the user can select one of the options uh, next we have is the add so um, I can go ahead and add a new element uh, so if the user does not have any uh, any data, they can just enter any and click on submit. So once the user clicks submit, that's the final step of the uh, process and this is the end of the tool. Uh, so now let's head on back to the home page. So let's go and check the login. So the user will have to enter the uh, email and password that they used in the registration process. So when I click on login, uh, so this is the user dashboard. As you can see here, we have the history, uh, which shows the structure number, closure joint, best strategy, initial cost, and estimated service life. So for each closure joint type, we have the closure joint, we have the best strategy and the initial cost and the service life. So whatever your last results were, that those are stored here. So for each closure joint, we have different results which are stored. And it's basically the last results are, that are stored here, as you can see. Uh, so now if the user wants to add a new closure joint, they can just click here and follow the process. process. So closure joint properties, local site requirements, and just fill the data again, which will, um, which will add a new uh, closure joint type here. So that is the end of the tool. So let's go back to the presentation so in the conclusion uh, this research took an existing ABC UTC guide for service life design of longitudinal deck closure joints and created a user-friendly web-based tool to promote easier use of this method and implementation uh, meeting the research objectives this uh, the tool is visual and allows user to easily navigate through the design options decision uh, design steps or on-site requirements, etc. Uh, the tool calculates the estimated service life of the bridge deck using the chosen joint type along with the initial cost for, the, for that option. These are then used with chosen weights, weighing factors in a multi-criteria decision-making algorithm to help user choose the best closure joint option or mitigation strategy. This tool has potential to be expanded to other bridge elements, such as expansion joints. And 
that concludes the presentation. Thank you, everyone. Thanks to Shima and Mark today for your interesting and informative presentation. Paul and Jamal will now moderate the Q&A session. Paul? Thank you, Mary Lou. Okay. Um, we've got a few questions that came in beforehand and then uh, uh, some more questions that have come in during the question and answer session. And some of them are still coming in. So uh, with that, uh, we'll go um, get underway. The first question I wanted to ask, though, came in uh, during the question and answer session. And it was, uh, what is the definition of service life that you use in the study? Talked about it a bunch, but they wanted a, a, a definition on it. Yeah, I can take that one, Shima. Uh, so the, the definition of service life that we were using in this study uh, comes from those previous studies. So say from the R19A uh, study that we're basing um, this work on. Uh, and that definition is that it's the time period that the bridge will serve the function uh, that it was intended to serve. Um, and that's kind of the, the, the most basic definition I can give you there. Okay. I wanted to ask that question first because we've got a whole bunch of other questions that revolve around that or some, some other questions that resolve around it. Okay, the next question came in uh, before the uh, presentation, and uh, you kind of answered that in the conclusion at the end, but I don't know if you want to elaborate on it. Do you think this uh, algorithm is applicable to all bridge components or specific components? Uh, you specifically use this for uh, closure pore joints, but uh, and you said it was uh, uh, in the conclusions, they said it could be other components. Do you want to elaborate on that at all? Uh, sure. Uh, so what we presented today is for longitudinal closure joints, uh, and we followed the steps in the guide, but the framework can be applied to other uh, bridge components. Uh, um, so the question, so the answer is yes, uh, it is applicable to other components and bridge elements. Okay. Uh, another question that came in uh, uh, beforehand, before the presentation, is uh, did you think about the automated decision making based on the bridge rating data for DOTs? So uh, I'm not sure if uh, I understand the question uh, correctly. Uh, this is a kind of a broad question, but by automated decision making, is, um, so uh, here we are not uh, taking uh, experimental data for calculations. Um, so we are following the um, the rules for um, calculating the service life, the parameters, and uh, some limited data that we have for cost. So we are not using any um, bridge rating data for uh, or like historical data during the ca calculation. But if um, if they can elaborate on the question, maybe I will be able to give a better answer. Okay. So um, I, I, well, I would also say that. You know, this is intended more of a, a guidance in the design stage rather than, you know, for an existing bridge. Uh, and, you know, at the end, there is a discussion of collecting some of the inspection data, uh, but is intended more to try to improve the service life prediction potentially in the future uh, and to help the, the user to have more, um, you know, data to make their decision rather than um, any inspection data being incorporated in this specific tool. Okay. Now, we had a question beforehand, and this goes back to the design life again. It says, have you considered all service design life parameters? So, I guess the, 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 during our presentation, we touched on that. So, all the parameters that we had for uh, the fixed second law and uh, those um, are parameters that we considered. So we followed uh, the parameters for that equation. So I hope with the presentation, they have a better idea on parameters we used for service life. Okay. Um, here's uh, one that came in beforehand also. It says, can the research output be used for existing bridges to do rehabilitation work? Royce, you kind of talk, talked about existing bridges or, or in the design process a minute ago. So you, you could potentially use the tool for the uh, rehabilitation of this type of a joint, but this tool is specifically for 
the the closure joints, which you're going to see more likely at the new construction point. Okay. Uh, here's another question that came in beforehand. Have you determined the efficiency and reliability of this research? Um, so um, in this research, uh, we uh, followed the steps provided in the guide already. And there are like numerical examples. And then um, so um, we, uh, we did uh, this uh, research is the implementation of that guide. Uh, so I believe uh, that uh, the algorithms we design uh, are reliable, are tested based on the examples uh, we had in the guide. We even uh, tried out some uh, other examples and LRFD um, guides. And we uh, do believe that our, uh, the implementation is uh, consistent with what we had in the guide. Uh, just to add up on that, we have some assumptions like the cracking in the concrete, which we cannot physically implement in the uh, algorithm. So those are some of the that may affect the service life of the bridge closure joint. So that's one of the assumptions. So we have mentioned the assumptions. So those can be taken into consideration. Okay. Yeah, there, there are some so that, some limitations that you know Mark is talking about that he identified. Uh, and there are notes for a lot of those in the tool where it will bring up the information on, you know, what's the limitation of that assumption. And even, you know, Mark showed a few of the links to uh, the research that back up, you know, those limitations. Okay. Uh, another one that came in uh, before the, the webinar was, uh, does the research output include geographical data to consider seismicity or similar effects? Royce, would you take that? So the it includes geographical data, but for the uh, exposure, um, we're not considering strength design at all uh, in this tool. So seismicity is not applicable. Um, it's a strength issue, not a service life issue. And this tool is just for uh, service life design. Okay. Uh, and the other question that came in uh, before I, uh, Turn it over to Jamal. There are a bunch of other questions that have come in dur during the question and answers. But uh, is the software available for use now? Yeah. Um, so that's a very good question. Uh, the software, we expect the software to be available in a couple of weeks or so. Uh, the project has a web page on ABC UTC website. So we encourage uh, interested users to check that uh, page and we are finalizing the security measures. So uh, I would expect it in a couple of weeks or so. Okay. Uh, that gets us through the questions that came in up until the start of the question and answer session. So I'm going to go and turn it over to Jamal, and he is going to uh, take over from here. Jamal? Thank you, Paul. Uh, a great presentation uh, and a great tool. You guys did a, a really good job in demonstrating this uh, a new tool uh, for automating the uh, service life of, uh, of a closure port. There's a few questions that came in after the um, during the, the session here, one question is what you can do regarding the corrosion control. And you mentioned in your presentation, for example, is using a st stainless steel and uh, uh, an overlay of ultra high performance concrete uh, and others. But uh, what do you, can you add, can you add uh, what do you, do for mitigation uh, for corrosion control. So I can try try to answer that one. I don't know that I necessarily understand uh, all of the question because with the the mitigation strategies that are included in the uh, the tool uh, are all coming back to the issue of corrosion. That's kind of the the parameter that um, this tool uses to consider service life. Uh, and the, the way it works is we look at corrosion. Um, initiation based on chloride concentration at the level of the steel uh, and then a fixed number of when that uh, how many years uh, it will take to, to that or for that corrosion to be a big problem 
Uh, and so the mitigation strategies that are included, so sealers, uh, overlays, membranes, um, increased deck thickness are all going back to um, trying to extend that time uh, for when corrosion initiates. Good, good, good answer, uh, Royce. Uh, there is another question regarding the corrosion, and this is really a long uh, uh, question. Uh, so I'm going to summarize it a little bit. It says about the the, the equation that's been used for the, uh, for the uh, corrosion, which is the fixed law, the second fixed law, considered in the uh, uh, in the study and in the tool. Uh, they say, how come you don't use uh, the uh, probabil probabilistic approach, which is preferred over uh, the uh, fixed uh, fix law? Uh, uh, I think this is uh, in summary, it's a long question, but this is in summary what they're proposing here. Why not use the probabilistic approach versus the uh, fixed second law? for corrosion so for the uh, i can try to answer and then royce please jump in um so for uh, the service lab we focused on the time to initiate the corrosion and we are not considering the propagation period uh, which is more uh, like a um, reactive so we, if we want to think about this in a proactive way so uh, we, we focus on the first part the time to start the um the chloride ingress. So that was the logic So we, that we didn't focus on the propagation part and uh, um, focus on the, this part of the equation. And then for the probabilistic approach, I'm aware that, um, so there are, uh, you know, for parameters, uh, we usually do Monte Carlo simulation and uh, we run different um, uh, probabilistic uh, distribution for that. For this, uh, uh, specific project we went with uh, mean value and I guess Royce can uh, elaborate on the, whatever I said. So so what I would add to that um, just that in general is you know we're kind of considering this tool to be somewhat of a starting point uh, and we wanted to match up with what had been done uh, in the previous research so that we could um, easily compare the results uh, output from this tool to the uh, examples that had been done in the previous research and so we tried to match the methods that they had used uh, which could be the, the simplest answer good uh, that, that's all the question that came in uh, during the um, the presentation uh, so that would conclude uh, the QEA uh, Mary Lou uh, that's all I have Okay, thank you. Uh, so, uh, Royce and Shima, do you do you want to go over the main steps of the process again, just uh, just to summarize? Uh, sure. Um, okay, here. Um, so, overall, uh, in this tool, we uh, start with asking about uh, some uh, joint properties, a general question about the um, local site, and then uh, we ask the user to choose um, some. Uh, um, closure joint uh, types uh, they, they are dealing with. So and the five alternatives were given in the uh, guide. So uh, that's the, uh, the options that the user can choose from. And then uh, we move on to the false tree analysis. And here I would like to just uh, briefly elaborate on the false tree analysis. So the idea is that the user can choose factors affecting service life. Uh, it can be on their um, man-made or hazard or uh, related to other um, modes of failure available in the guide. So the user chooses the option which are applicable. And then um, after selecting the factors, then we uh, the tool uh, shows some um, general mitigation uh, solutions. Um, so that's the part that the user can go back and update uh, the factors. So that gives some idea to the user that how they can deal with different uh, uh, service life issues. And then if they want to uh, modify closure joint for new design, they can do that. And after the closure joint uh, 
type is finalized, then they can move on to the service life calculation and then um, cost parameters and do the uh, trade-off analysis to um, choose the best option based on these two criteria. Um, so Royce, if you have anything to add. Uh, really all that I would add to that uh, is that, um, you know, that it may be that you're constrained on the type of joint that you have. Um, or the, the option, the details that, you know, the owner wants. Um, and so you may, you know, be set with this is the, the type of joint detail that we're considering and this tool would allow you to consider, um, you know, mitigation strategies for that specific detail. Uh, or it could be a possibility of considering uh, multiple different joint details uh, and so you would be able to use these steps to go through um, through that as well. Um, and so you have some, you know, di different ways that this tool could be used. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, the, the engineer is going to have to make the decision of what strategies to use based on that information. Uh, and I'll also say, um, in addition to, to what Shima uh, said, um, but uh, we used initial cost in this tool, whereas the, the original guide, you know, used a, a um, life cycle cost analysis. Um, so I think that, I think that's all I want to add uh, to what Shima said. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Ator, um, do you have anything to add before we, um, um, uh, finish this research seminar? Uh, thanks, Mary Lou. Um, I was listening. Shima and Royce have done such a great job, really. And what I can add to what Shima and Royce said is that um, the main steps like Shima and Royce explained is really to using the fault tree. Fault tree is just a way of trying to say, okay, uh, what kind of failure mode am I going to get if I use a different option, let's say, if uh, due to, let's say, to salt in the roads. So the fault tree tells you when you select, there was in this in the program, there was a place that you would say, okay, I am concerned about the salting the road, the icing salt, uh, I'm, I'm worried about the, let's say, fatigue and so on. For each one of those factors that you think that you are going to get, basically, um, your service life is going to decrease, um, uh, this fault tree tells you um what kind of solution you can use so this whole program really what shima and royce have done for the factors that you think that's going to affect the service life of the your closure joints it tells you um what solutions you have but these are all in the backgrounds and it gives you the solutions and then the final product is in terms of the cost so it's only for the for the closure joints but you can extend the philosophy that is used for in this tool for different elements of the bridge and also you can kind of um, take into account the effect of the, the interaction that exists between them. Um, there was a one question that was asked about the fixed law, why use the uh, one direction? Well, the, the, ingress, the ingress of the uh, chloride in the closure joints is primarily in one directions. So that's why Shima and uh, Royce, they use the, the fixed line uh, in a one direction. The, uh, there was another question that was asked, why not use a probabilistic? Well, there's a different ways of using a fixed law. The probabilistic is one of them. And in this case, basically, uh, they were interested in finding out how fast, basically, uh, the, the chloride ingresses and reaches and causes a corrosion at the reinforcement level. Now, if you have the data, like Shima said, you can go through the Monte Carlo simulation and so on, and you can basically incorporate that. Um, um, so, and then th there were lots of questions related to if this software is available and how uh, uh, it's going to be used and so on. We are still looking at that. Uh, there are lots of logistics that's involved. Uh, I don't believe that the software is going to be downloadable. One one item that we are looking at, I, I believe Shima mentioned at the very end that the users can input the inspection data. So this tool is really is supposed to get smarter as 
the more input that gets into it. So the decisions are made based on a larger body of the data. So, but if you are interested in using a, uh, the, the beta version of this program, send us an email, okay? Because that's probably going to be one of the uh, one of the next step that that we're going to take on. So, if I want to summarize it, really, the main step in this procedure, like Shima and Royce mentioned, is to uh, you put all the job requirements. The program identifies based on the input what uh, modes of the failures you can have, what solutions are available, and then based on that, it gives you the basically the the final configuration of the joints that you should use, and then it gives you a cost. You can take that cost if you want. You can do the life cycle cost analysis. This tool is only applicable right now for the closure joints, but the philosophy that is used is based on the Sharp 2 R19A deliverable, which really also form the foundation for the ashto lrft uh, service life design guide for the bridges so the foundation of the that is used in this tool and the ashto lrft service life design guide are, are the same which is really what what's the sharp 2 r19 a project is if you are interested to learn more about the service life design just google sharp 2 r19 a and look at the final report for that project. You will learn uh, a lot about that. Look at the just, if you don't have a time, just look at the chapter one. The chapter one of that uh, guide that deliverable for Sharp uh, 2 R19A has in chapter one, has a very good example, hand solution, hand, uh, just a hand calculations uh, for a bridge that was located in like in a Northeast area. And it goes through all these steps. And what Shima and Royce have done, really have taken all that steps and customized it for the closure joints. So hopefully in the future, I mean, this these approach uh, will uh, continue to develop similar tools for other bridge elements. Uh, the use of this software is very simple, very simple. I mean, the, the Shima has done a great job in really just inputting the very few information and then getting a cost and that's what the owner wrote. so anyway so Mary Lou, that's that's all i had but it was a great i really enjoyed the shima and Roy's presentation this was a great presentation okay thank you very much well uh, while you were talking um we got a couple of more questions so we'll just ask them why bottom sealer usually considered detrimental to deck life um i can i can have bottom sealer uh, the reason for that is sometimes, at least those of you who live in the Florida, you have this jet ski that goes underneath of the bridge and then you are spraying all this salt water. So the corrosion can start from the bottom. So that, that's uh, one of the reasons that we, uh, I think Shima and Royce consider that. Okay, anything to add? Okay, the last question, do you said. plan? Great, thank you. Uh, do you plan on extending the study to other elements so service life of bridge at system level can be assessed? Um, uh, if, would you like me, Royce, Shima, to elaborate on that? Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> the, the, the whole idea, the whole idea with this uh, thinking is that uh, to uh, the service life, the service life of the the bridge as a system, you may say 75 or 100 years, but the service life of the each element, let's say a sliding surface, could be only uh, if it's a Teflon sheet, could be five years, 10 years. Bearing could be lower. So the service life of the different elements of the bridge can be different than the service life of the the entire bridge. So, and there's interaction between all that. Um, as a system so in the again going back to r19a there's a flow chart that tells you how these things are related together hopefully one day we will be able to develop a tools that not only design service life address the service life of the one element of the bridge but looks at the interaction between those and the uh, ensures that uh, the service life of the entire bridge let's say is 100 years or so usually in at least in a long span bridge, the the owner says that 
I want to have, let's say, for example, 100 years service life without major interruption. What that means is that over the 100 years, I don't want to have a close the bridge to the traffic, but I do understand that some bridge elements may have, let's say, 10 years or 15 years service life. So I should be able to replace them without closing the entire bridge to the traffic. So that's, uh, so, and, and all that is really, if you go back again to the chapter one of the R19A, it is addressed how these things interact. And hopefully one day, one day the bridge community maybe should have these kind of tools um, and hopefully Shima and Royce will kind of, uh, will continue to work with them to develop these tools in the future. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks again to Shima and Ma Mark and Royce um, for sharing your ABC research work at, at the University of Oklahoma in collaboration with George Mason University and for your and Atorid's thoughtful responses during the Q&A session. Thanks also to Paul and Jamal for moderating the Q&A session Thank, and to Ali for managing the web room and to all of you uh, the participants for your interest, attendance, and your great questions. We really appreciate the questions. That helps uh, elaborate on the, the research project. So thank you very much for those. Our next quarterly research seminar is scheduled for, for Friday, October the 28th. Details will be posted on the ABC UTC website as developed. This concludes today's seminar. Thank you all. <laughs>